بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has given us another opportunity to be discussing the verses of the Holy Quran and the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhim salam And if you have followed us, you know that we have reached the 10th verse of Surah Al-Baqarah uh, chapter 2 verse 10 where we are discussing about the characteristics of hypocrites if you remember within the first couple of verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the characteristics of the believers and then the second part of this series we talked about the disbelievers within two three verses within next 13 to 14 verses that inshallah we are talking about hypocrites and their characteristics what characteristics they had so we learn it from them from these characteristics for us not to be hypocrites inshallah we go through one after one chapter 2 verse 10 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states fi qulubihim maradun fazadahum allahu marada wa lahum adhabun alimun bima kanu yakthibun there is a sickness in their hearts then Allah increased their sickness and there is a painful punishment for them because of the lies they used to tell. The punishment that is waiting them is due to the lies that the hypocrites used to tell. What was the lie that they used to say? The difference between what they believed in their heart and what they said on their tongue and their action was completely different. They didn't believe in Islam. As we mentioned within the previous episode, they accepted Islam because they saw that Islam is growing and Islam started gain, gaining popularity, started getting wealth and job titles were spreading around within the community. So they wanted to be part of that movement. And they saw that the disbelievers don't have that much power against the Muslim. They didn't want it to be killed. And they saw this movement and this religion is growing rapidly so they accepted islam but to, by by what by their tongue and their actions only but their hearts within their heart they were completely a disbeliever their statement is not a lie we read within chapter 63 verse 1 allah says about al munafiqun the hypocrites ila ja'aka al munafiqun qalu nashhadu annaka la rasulullah وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ لَرَسُولُهُ وَاللَّهُ يَشْحَدُ أَنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَكَاذِبُونَ Chapter 63, verse 1. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, When the hypocrites come to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, they say, We bear witness that you are indeed the messenger of Allah. Parentheses. Allah knows that you are indeed his messenger. And Allah bears witness that the hypocrites are liars indeed. Beautifully, this verse comes hand in hand together to bring a very beautiful message for you and I, brothers and sisters. The number one, when the hypocrites approach and come to Rasulullah, they will say only verbally, they will say, Nashhadu anna Rasulullah. We bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verbally, they are claiming it. But as we are mentioning, within their heart, there is no belief toward Rasulullah and Allah and the religion of Islam. And Allah says, Wallahu ya'lamu anna kala Rasulullah. Rasuluh. Allah knows that you are the messenger of His. He knows it. And then Allah continues, Wallahu yashhadu inna al munafiqina lakadibun. If Allah wouldn't mention that He bear witness and He knows that you are the messenger, then the last phrase it would have been, Well, when Wallahu yashhadu inna al munafiqina lakadibun, that Allah bears witness that the hypocrites are liars indeed, would have referred to the first segment where they said, we bear witness that you are the messenger. But Allah brings a statement in the middle that Allah, Wallahu ya'lamu innaka la rasuluh. Allah knows that you are the messenger of God. His, but these people are liars. And their lie, it's that they say something 
but their intention is completely the opposite. Their heart does not accept what they are uttering. Their lie is when they are claiming by saying that in my heart also I believe in what I am saying. Very, very important that we try to build a very strong connection and match between what we believe and between what we say and act upon. They should match. If not, we are a liar. If I say something that I don't believe in, or if I act upon something that I don't believe in, I'm a liar. That is one sign of a hypocrite, of munafiq, a person who doesn't say what he believes and he does it the opposite. Or he says something that he acts upon something that he does not believe. Very important. Next verse, chapter 2, verse 11. So we have to be very careful about lying. What is lie when we have double personality? When I say something, but I act upon something else. When I believe in something, but I say I believe in something else. Allah continues. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ when they are told, do not cause corruption on the earth, they say, we are only reformers. These people, the hypocrites, used to cause for the prophet and the believers a lot of problems. They used to cause a lot of problems for the prophets and the Muslims. They were spreading the secrets of the believers to non-believers. They become very, very dangerous. For example, Within the 83 battles that Rasulullah was involved and all of them, it was brought to him and he defended himself according to our historians and narrators of a hadith. None of the battles he started, all of them he was defending himself and the Muslim nations. He would plan a plan that they will have less casualties, less dead amongst the Muslims. So he would plan a plan that he would, for example, surprise the army. They are already trying to attack him, but he would surprise them in a way that they are not ready, so they will have less casualties. But these munafiqi, these hypocrites, would go and will tell the secrets to the non-believers, the kuffar, who are attacking Muslims and the Holy Prophet. For example, within uh, when Rasulullah came after Medina, he established the government, he came and he... Con and he opened Mecca and got back Mecca from the hand of the kafar and the disbelievers. Before he came to Mecca, Angel Jibra'il, he came and he told the Prophet that one of these munafiqeen, he wrote a letter to the kafar and he gave it to his wife to hide it within her hair. So nobody can see her and she's going toward Mecca to let them know that you are coming. The Holy Prophet sends Amir al-Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, to go and get her. He goes and he gets her. He comes and he brings her back. And Rasulullah brings the husband. Why did you do such things? And then he started bringing excuses. If you remember, we talked all about excuses. Oh, I have some family, some relatives. I was afraid that these kafars will do something to them. I have some property, this and that. So these are munafiqeen that we are talking about. Munafiqeen that we are talking about. And they were more dangerous. They are. And they, they were and they are a true enemy of Muslims. Allah says in chapter 63, verse 4, They are the enemy. Not the disbelievers. They are the enemy. They are the enemy that are more dangerous and they can cause more harm than the disbelievers. Because when you have an enemy and then you know of that enemy, you plan accordingly. But when you have an enemy within that has worn the clothes of your friend, you won't be able to distinguish. Allah knows it. Rasulullah knows it. The commander of the faithful, Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, knows it and Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. But the problem is that they have to judge people by their appearance. They cannot say, well, this guy is munafiq, this guy is munafiq. But, inshallah, we will read within the, this episode or the following episode, narrations of Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam which will give us detail and characteristics of a, of a hypocrite for us to make sure, identify them, and for us to make sure we are not one of those people. They are the enemy, so be aware of them. 
May Allah assail them. Where do they stray? Next verse, chapter 2, verse 12. Allah says, "Ala innahum humul mufsiduna, walakin la yashurun." They are themselves the agents of corruption, but they are not aware, because in chapter two, verse eleven, Allah says, "Wa idha qila lahum la tufsidu fil ar," if they, when they are told, "Do not cause corruption on the earth," they will reply, "Qalu inna ma nahnu muslihun." They say, "We are only reformers." Then Allah continues, says. Look, they are themselves the agents of corruption, but they are not aware. How they are not aware? As we mentioned within the previous episode, when you commit one sin, and then two sins, and three sins, ten sins, it's like a sabha, like a rosary, like a domino. One has effects. You push the first one, Second, third, fourth, fifth, it will go all the way to the end. If it's not stopped somewhere, it will continue. It will get to a point that they think they're do they are doing something good, but they are harming. They are creating problems for the Muslims, for the Islam, for the prophets. And we see the path that they created right away after Rasulullah's departure. As we mentioned, and we need to re-emphasize, their harm was more dangerous and destructive to Islam and the Muslims, much greater dangerous than the non-believers. Non-believers in the battle, they come, you go one-to-one, -one, you fight, you defend yourself, and that's the battle, it's finished. But these people came, they were within the first lines of Salat al-Jama'ah behind Rasulullah. They probably wore the same clothes close to what Rasulullah was wearing and their behavior, people, the Muslims saw these people to be one of them. But not knowing that within there, they had very, very dangerous disease spreading this disease amongst the Muslims. The non-believer enemies of Muslims were known and the Muslims would know how to deal with these people. However, the enemy that is wearing the mask of the friend becomes more dangerous. They will go they will get to know your secrets and then spread it to the enemy. These are the most dangerous enemies of Islam and Muslimin. And until today, we see these kind of people. The people who came and killed Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The person who killed Imam Hassan alayhi salam. The person who killed Imam Ali alayhi salam. And all the other Imams were martyred. They were not killed by the disbelievers. They were not killed by Jews or Christians. They were killed by so-called Muslim believers. All of them. They call themselves Khalifatul Muslimin. So we have to be careful. Anyone who gives this title to himself, that I am in charge of Muslimin, I am in charge of the Muslim nation, we have to be very careful. No one except Ahlul Bayt can take our maraja. They have limited authority. None of the maraja have absolute authority um, uh, upon the believers, except Ahl Bayt Salam, 12 Imams. They have and Rasulullah. They have absolute authority. No one else can claim that position because everyone else is fallible. And Ahl Bayt Salam, they are infallible. So we have to be careful. Let them be called scholars. Let them be called whomever they got called. Let them be the leader of whomever. If they claim that because they are fallible, they can make mistakes, so they cannot have absolute authority, the same authority of the Imams. Even though they are the representative of the Imams, our Maraja, may Allah prolong their lives, they are the representative of the Imams amongst us, but they have limited authority. So the reason why they are not aware of their wrongful action and hypocrisy, I'll give you an example. What makes them not to be aware that they are creating problems within the Muslim community? For example, you enter a place and there is a very, very, sorry to say, disgusting fragrance. Something smells very bad. First, when you enter, you smell it. You cannot take it. But the longer that you stay there, you get used to it. After an hour maybe or two hours, the, the different people different amount of time needs for them to get adapted to that smell. And after that, it gets used to it. 
I remember I went to buy some fish. I got near the fish market. I couldn't smell with my nose. The smell was really, really disgusting. But I saw the people working there. I asked them, don't you smell the fish? Like, don't you smell? He said, no, chef, we just got used to it. Another example. When you go somewhere and there's like very, very awkward noises, you're hearing it. And you see people are working there. For example, you go next to uh, Ironsmith and the, him hitting the iron and the noise. He got used to it. But for us, because we are not familiar with this noise, we are not used to it. it. It hurts us. These hypocrites, due to the amount of hypocrisy that was within them and the illness that they had inside them that they brought for themselves, Rasulullah came to bring happiness and tranquility for the people, but they didn't accept it. So they brought sin after sin after sin, illness after illness to their hearts. It gets to the point that they are not aware that they are creating problems. How can we prevent us becoming a hypocrite? How can we stop this? Inshallah, we will discuss it in the next episode. We will conclude this episode with the most important dua. The dua that we always have to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this dua and accept and fulfill this dua and nothing else should be a priority for us that is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif so let us raise our hand and read dua Faraj together inshallah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Allahumma kun li waliyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hasan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abaih fi hadhi sa'ata wa fi kull sa'ah waliyan wa hafiza wa qa'idan wa nasira wa dalilan wa ayna hatta tuskinu wa ardaka taw'a wa tumatta'u فيها طويلة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين